Uh, my name is Orestes, and the focus of my presentation is on a work in progress uh, about an action science intervention uh, with the Worker Cooperatives Network of Athens, which is located in Greece. The choice for focusing on this research topic was primarily driven by my real life experience, being embedded in one of its founding members for more than 10 years. Due to the COVID pandemic and the lack of funding, this work is still at an early stage, at least as an intervention based on action rules and techniques and cannot be classified as action science yet. To be more specific, it is only limited to the first step of a standard three-step process that normally includes uh, as a first step to analyze defensive routines like conflict avoidance and error camouflage. Secondly, challenge the defensive routines in place by, po by pointing out incongruence with the values espoused by cooperators and creating a stimulating environment uh, for, a, for a reflexive uh, communication. Third, reflect on the process of moving towards congruence between espoused values and actions. In, the ca in this case, I have intervened as part of my active membership in my engagement at various debates and have evoked the eruption of defensive routines. But since I was not aware of action science techniques at the time, my interventions have been quite limited and with little accomplishments. Therefore, at the moment, my research could be better described as ethnographic since it primarily involves prolonged dimension in the field conducted through means of overt participant observation for more than, ten, for more than four years as a researcher uh, and more as an active member. Uh, in today's presentation, I will briefly touch upon the theme of intercooperation. If you are interested in more background information about the network and the recent emergence of a first wave of radical cooperatives in Greece, you can link it to my, you can look into my thesis, which is entitled Developing Theories and Tools for Resisting the Generation with the Working Cooperatives Network of Athens, which is available online. So, how to expand in intercooperation and its limits within a constellation of radical worker cooperatives in Greece? This question troubled me when I realized some unexpected limitations and the potentials for intercooperation within the network. Being an active advocate of intercooperation since the, since the inception of the network, I have been heavily involved in the promotion of the adoption of a variety of schemes for mutual self-help among its members. Indeed, self-help has been one of the foundational principles and objectives of the network. Besides, members of uh, Workers' Cooperative Network of Athens consider that to avoid the threat of degeneration or get strangled by competition, it was a necessity to establish a solidarity market between them and to, ne to network with similar in initiatives in terms of aspirations. Some of the best practices in terms of intercooperation that were adopted over the years have uh, been theorized before. For example, Daskalaki and Kokinidis in a paper in 2017 touch upon the workers' mobility scheme, which involves uh, members of one collective uh, filling in gaps in another in case of a pregnancy or some health issues, so that the latter would not have to retreat to hiring non-members non, non and wage labor. Another case of mutual support has been the establishment of a common fund, which uh, involved covering the operational cost of the network, but also supporting through loans, um, members that were in a crisis. And in perspective, the ambition was to also uh, help fund the facilitation of new projects. All the aforementioned practices had, of course, their limitations in terms of capacities, but uh, all have also proven quite useful in shaping a sense of common identity and shared belonging among members. So, as the network had, has put it in one of its public documents, 
uh, such practices resulted in building a sense of mutual trust and identity between cooperators that also undermined that also undermined partly the limits between individual collectives and contributed in the cultivation of a broader community of cooperators. Beyond the limitations of such mutual self scheme, there was schemes. There were also uh, there was also a difficulty for individual collectives to communicate with the rest. Their difficulties at an early stage. In part, this has also been a problem within the collectives themselves uh, due to the high expectation for a less conflictual environment than that encountered in conventional enterprises. So cooperators often adopted the notion that some things are better left unsaid to avoid friction and hurting the feelings of fellow co-workers. Yet such an attitude was both undermining the team spirit within individual collectives by sabotaging discussing options for collective measures, but also the capacities of, for intercooperation among the members of the network. To be more specific, I will provide you with one example. One collective faced economic difficulties, which it shared with the rest. This collective also informed the rest upon a plan of action based on the understanding that there was a marketing problem. While the great majority of the members uh, considered that there were also important problems in terms of production, almost none pointed out in public. In this way, they also further reinforced uh, the group thing uh, in the member. On top of that, some individuals sharply said that challenging Groupthink was not of our business and considered any comment along these lines as a judgment. Uh, I will use a quotation here. Uh, we are not meant to have a say on how its collective is dealing with its business issues or to just to judge their products. We are judging modes of production, not products. Yet for me, such an attitude was a considerable limitation for the potentials of intercooperation and making better use of the variety of skills uh, available within the network as an ecosystem. So the only way that I consider fitting with both the objectives of the network and uh, that I've seen uh, in theory that is quite uh, fitting was to first document on the long run the counterproductive elements of our intercommunication, then raise the awareness of members on the products of this um, uh, of this level of communication, and slowly developing and improving uh, our skills uh, in dealing with embarrassment, threat, uh, by adopting action science rules and techniques. In other words, by helping cooperators reflect on the world they create and learn to change it in ways more congruent with the values and theories they espouse. Hence, and this is my closing remark, my aim for moving on with this research is to focus on how to increase the members' awareness of the defensive routines in place and to facilitate reflection upon the unintended choices that they made, which limited the potentials for intercooperation among cooperators. Besides, my prior experience on an action science intervention in my own collective has already suggested that action science rules and techniques can be operationalized to better overcome defensive routines, undermining the potentials of cooperation. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much, Oresti. So, um... Please raise your hand. There is a reactions button uh, uh, on the bottom where you can use to uh, yeah, raise your hand virtually and ask a question or just unmute yourselves or just wave at me. I 
Any any comments? Oresti, can you? I mean, you touched upon that, but can you tell us a bit more about action research? Give us some examples for those that have no idea about what this involves, and uh, you know, elaborate a bit uh, on this approach. Yeah, um, I think that the action action research is a broader gender and action science is a, a more um, specific way of uh, conducting action research. So the, the main idea is that, um, okay, you can document the stuff and uh, provide accounts of uh, uh, certain um, uh, subjects, uh, but sometimes to better understand what lies beneath uh, um, a certain uh, state of affairs, you have to intervene. And based on this intervention, you can uh, um, make um, some descriptions and explanations that would otherwise uh, would have been missed. Um, now, in terms of the action science, um, the idea is um, um, to both, uh, there's a, there are some techniques that are quite useful in uh, documenting and make evident um, uh, quite easily uh, uh, what are the dynamics that uh, you consider that are uh, not um, that are detrimental uh, for the participants and then based on their own aspirations you don't you are not um, you're not using your own uh, uh, priorities. You, you have as a uh, guiding, as a guidance, their own stated uh, desires and aspirations. You try to, um, to show them uh, how, um, how their default uh, non-conscious reactions sometimes uh, make them um, uh, don't, do not allow them to to act according to their uh, objectives. So then the the difficult part is to um provide uh, a different uh, set of um, um, of an example where um, it is okay to make mistakes where you don't have to fear uh, about your opinion or uh, so so there is uh, in a sense, um, um, you try to insert, not to insert, to make available a different pattern uh, of uh, dealing with uh, conflict, threats, embarrassment, and so on. Um, and, um, and then it, it's up to them uh, to choose uh, how they want to um, how they want to operate, and based on the, the whole process, uh, there are a variety of findings and uh, things that you can elaborate on. In a nutshell, that's it. Okay, sounds challenging. Uh, so Ian has a has a question for you. Yeah, I'm hoping you can hear, you can hear me. Yeah. 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 Okay. I I just looked at your 
PhD copy that somebody's put a link to. And uh, I see that you've studied at Nottingham Trent and, and that George Cochanides was, uh, was, was an influence on your work. Is yeah, yeah. that the case? Because I, I knew George because uh, he was at Leicester University and he was interested in some work that we were doing around uh, a, a sort of carnival, uh, a sort of informal co-op. And we were trying to use a sort of action research or some sort of reflective methodology, at least I was, uh, with, with this group of people that ca came together. And it is very difficult to, uh, to try and point up within the group what you think is happening that may not be as wonderful as you know people and the breaking through the the natural denial syndrome and the sensitivities that people have i you know it was very difficult i had to leave the group in the end having uh pushed cooperative values uh they got a bit fed up with me keep referring to cooperative values and principles because it undermined the dynamic that had been created. So I think it's really important work that you, you're doing. And I know that the work in, in, in Greece is, has been very influential and important in a very difficult set of austerity circumstances. So, you know, you know well done on what you're doing and I recognize the difficulty of taking it forward. Yeah, thanks. And I'll pick up on the question that Roger uh, has on the chat. Okay. Uh, I think, in a sense, I've been uh, I've been blessed. I don't know how to say, it, but uh, the fact that I was a member made uh, all uh, all things quite easier. So, in terms of ethics, it's quite easy for me to to deal uh, with my intervention. So I was um, part of the group. I contributed as well as the others on the objectives and our aspirations and so on. So it was a natural process. I guess that um, if it was an outsider, it would be quite um, difficult uh, both to identify um, some problems uh, or to intervene. So for example, uh, George and Koikinidis in one of our uh, conversations uh, had pointed out this because there's also the, the nature of access. So it's difficult for you to uh, put pressure in a sense to the, um, to the participants and also, uh, there are the ethical considerations. So, yeah, for me, it was quite easy. And the fact that um, um, you use as a starting point their own stated uh, desires and objectives makes life quite easier. So, also, uh, it is also a matter of um, Because it is a collaborative uh, project, it takes two. So um, it, it is a necessity that uh, in this process, which is quite unsettling in the beginning, that the participants are intrigued to participate. So they have to uh, both find some uh, unsettling, uh, weird uh, 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 findings on their reactions, which is uh, which might be an initial uh, triggering for oh, what is this? I want to understand what's happening, but then. It is also a matter of uh, achieving some progress in themselves in uh, dealing better um, 
so that they understand that this experience, which is quite uh, difficult and disturbing uh, as a first reaction, it gets it can get productive and they, that they can by themselves judge that there is some progress, even if they share it or not. So it takes two to tango. And if, there, if you are uh, not in the right track, this, it simply doesn't get done. So you, it, the people just get quiet, they don't cooperate and your intervention is a failure. So yeah, something like that. Great. Any, any comments or questions? You can type something in the chat box or raise your hand. So is this already something that an intervention that takes place within the context of a research projects? And what happens beyond that? Is there like literature or practices where this kind of interventions become part of the mechanisms um, these organizations use in order to overcome problems or issues with intercooperations, etc. So I'm just trying to understand this kind of interventions can happen beyond kind of a research project. Yeah, of course, this is not a, I don't know, I just, I can only judge my, my experience. So um, I'm a person that uh, is quite confident in some aspects. Uh, I was involved from for in this uh, particular coalition of competitors from the beginning. So I didn't have any problems with uh, giving and receiving critique and so on. Um, but then uh, I realized that this was not uh, the case. And sometimes I was seen as part of the problem. So uh independent of whether i um i'm a researcher or not so i don't know if i will be a researcher in a few years uh time so independent of um producing papers uh, or knowledge uh, and stuff uh i think it 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 it, it is quite an intriguing uh exercise a mental exercise and that's that's the way i approach it uh, and to respond to denise uh, it's a small coalition it's uh, it's around uh, seven eight uh, cooperatives uh, but there are also uh, contacts with many more and in different um, uh, in other in other areas of Greece so there is a, a festival that uh, is organized was organized before the pandemic uh, every year that uh, a lot of people that 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 the network was one of the key uh, organizers so uh, yeah there is uh, much more to it uh, in terms of um, membership but still uh, it is important to note that um, unfortunately uh, this has not been the, the norm uh, so a lot of cooperatives don't uh, don't uh, network don't uh, although they have quite radical uh, characteristics in in, the, in their internal structure uh, they, they are just um, not in, 
in an individualistic manner, uh, focusing on their self. But I think that the lack of a theory or of a strategy that um, uh, makes them confident in what they are doing is one of the most important contributing factors for them not um, uh, entering the public arena and the discourse around that. Quite interesting. Uh, Denise, is up uh, because you want to uh, raise a question, please? Yeah, please. Yes, I wanted to ask um, if you could tell us a bit more about the radical nature of these co-ops. Perhaps you, you told us, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, the standard is equal remuneration. Well, everybody gets uh, paid for the same amount of money. Uh, consensus decision-making is the norm. Uh, rotation between jobs is highly uh, favored and up to a point uh, this is the case at least for the standard operations but it depends on the on the nature of the of the cooperative so a lot of them are uh, coffee shops and uh, uh, there is uh, quite uh, job rotation is quite uh, working there, but there are also other places that this is not exactly the case, but the aspiration is in this direction. Uh, there is also a commitment of not um, uh, of not uh, seeing, seeing this as a business for profit. So uh, the, the aspiration is to get an, uh, a wage that we consider is uh, fair. And uh, if there are excessive profits, that this would be then uh, fed back to uh, movements, creation of new cooperatives, uh, supporting the network, and so on. Um, there is also a strict uh, uh, policy of uh, not allowing racist, uh, sexist, and so on uh, members. Um, a commitment to participate in campaigns for um, spreading cooperation. Um, so I think everything we can to avoid uh, the individualistic uh, nature and the for-profit uh, uh, mentality. So, and, and within their operations, uh, all try to minimize uh, what they can in terms of uh, polluting the environment and so on. So uh, yeah, even um, for example, uh, some uh, are interested in promoting uh, open open software, Linux and stuff like that. So there is a, a wide range. Uh, of practices there. Any, any questions or anything that the rest of you would like to? Oh, we have a question from Anna, yes. Hi, uh, thanks for the presentation. I wanted to ask if the action research um, interventions are directly directed more at the um, uh, processes inside of the cooperatives or you are also um, aiming at bringing together different stakeholders, different stakeholders 
or maybe institutional sectors or institutional bodies? Yeah, I think there is a wide uh, variety, a wide range of possible interventions. Um, but my experience so far has been um, in improving the internal uh, aspects of uh, both within individual cooperatives, but also as a network. So I've measured it, I've worked with quite a, a lot of individual cooperatives and their own assemblies. Um, yeah, but I, I haven't done something uh, broader uh, in, in this direction, yeah. But I think it, it's something that could be done. Yeah, I mean, uh, when you were talking, Norris, I was thinking of Anna's and Suna's presentation yesterday, talking about uh, improving communication, basically, and cooperation. So maybe Anna uh, would like to share some of your experiences in bringing in, I don't know, different uh, stakeholders and uh, uh, institutional actors. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, it's it's a, it's an interesting topic in relation to these more sort of radical uh, initiatives and cooperatives because uh, by their nature, often they are not uh, cooperating a lot with the institutional bodies, so they are uh, kind of more autonomous and. Uh, um actually for my research as a next step i also was thinking of uh, that it would be very useful to do some kind of inter intervention where uh, these the, the actors from these more radical initiatives are brought in the same room in the same space with uh, a more institutional actors and what can come out of this um yeah, like for example, in, in my sample, there is only one uh, cooperative that actively co uh, actively interacts and creates a collaboration with the local municipality, uh, trying to kind of change the municipality uh, um, vegetable provision for um, canteens and schools, and they're trying to turn it into something more local and more adapted to local producers uh, and it's not going that well this collaboration also because the municipality kind of uh, treats them also as you know very small and radical initiative so i think that um yeah i think that it's very important can be very um good direction to take um, Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Oresti, would you like to comment on anything that has been said? <laughs> Your personal oh, no, it's experience fine. It's fine. how this can work in Greece. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's it's a it's a good question, I guess. All right, so if there are no more comments, uh, let's all thank uh, Orestes with a virtual applause for uh, this very, very interesting uh, uh, presentation. And best of luck with uh, um, the project in the future. And um, I hope you get some good contacts uh, through uh, this conference as well uh, to help you. Uh, okay, perfect. So now we can move to our next uh, paper, uh, which is on social power in production. Uh, and it looks at worker recuperated enter uh, enterprises. Uh, and uh, this is presented by Denise Kasparian and uh, Julian Rebon. So I hand it over to you guys. Thank you. Well, I'm going to share screen now.
<laughs> here. Well, I hope you are seeing my screen. Yes, yes. Is it okay? Yes. yes. Great. Well, um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I don't know where are you right now. Well, I think that we can have a, a good talk, a good dialogue with Orestes, with our case studied with Julian Rebon. My name is Denise Casparian. Both Julian Rebon and I are professors and researchers in the field of social change and of social and solidarity economy in the Faculty of Social Sciences at the University of Buenos Aires in Argentina. The title of our presentation is Social Power in Production, an approach based on worker recuperated enterprises. Well, before delving into the objectives, methodology and findings of the research, we'd like to share what we mean by worker recuperated enterprises and contextualize a bit their emergence here in Argentina. Since the end of the 20th century, multiple experiences in the field of social and solidarity economy sought to develop alternative forms of production that promote social empowerment. One of these experiences are the empresas recuperadas in Spanish or worker recuperated enterprises in English. At the beginning of the 21st century, within the framework of a widespread crisis in Argentina, groups of workers confronted the crisis in the companies they worked by resorting to collective action. Recuperated enterprises thus are socio-productive units managed by their workers whose origin is in the conversion of capitalist companies. Beyond their differences and the different cases that exist, they present three notable aspects. First, a critical situation of previous companies in which business owners undermine the wage relationship, for example, by generalized dismissals or non-payment of wages. Second, processes of collective resistance by workers that acquire different intensities. The take, I think perhaps you've heard this word, the take or occupation of productive units is the most emblematic form of struggle. And finally, there is an organizational conversion of companies in practically all cases, the new enterprises adopt the worker cooperative legal form. This in Argentina, as in other latitudes, generated a renewal of cooperatives and of cooperativism. That's why there is a lot of literature that talks about new cooperativism here in Argentina. At present, there are 427 worker recuperated enterprises with around 15,000 workers. There has been a, a recent census of these cooperatives. With the purpose of assessing the process after three decades of its initial diffusion, in this work, we analyze the positive factors in the consolidation of worker recuperated enterprises as cooperative companies. Our main questions were, or are, still now, which are the cases that have achieved the best results as experiences of associative and self-managed work, and what factors have collaborated towards their consolidation. We think that focusing on the possibilities and limitations of these experiences to survive, develop, expand, and be sustainable is a way to, to assess to what extent these forms of new cooperativism imply social empowerment. Our theoretical perspective is plural with an axis of sociological approach. This way, we seek to analyze the social, political, and economic conditions for the consolidation of change processes in production. The research dialogues with contributions from the fields of social and solidarity economy, economic sociology, and social change. We understand cooperative consolidation as a process of continuity in time in which the company reaches different goals, both in a labor economic dimension, as well as in the associative dimension, both dimensions. In particular, we refer to the experiences that have reached productive continuity in time and the consolidation of the labor community with adequate work conditions 
while performing associative and self-managed work. Thus, we consider such enterprises rich cooperative consolidation that, in terms of labor and economic aspects, maintain productive continuity for over two years, have a working community that has increased or has sustained the number of workers registered at the time of its foundation, offer wages equaling or reaching levels above the minimum wage, and have workers with registered pension contributions and access to health care. That's in the economic la labor economic aspect. Regarding the ter terms of associative aspects, these cooperatives have, have to present elected board and carry out assemblies and adopt all workers as members of the cooperative, except for temporary workers or those in trial period, of course. The methodology strategy of this work is based on the individual and comparative qualitative analysis of recuperated enterprises that have reached consolidation as we have just described it. Fieldwork was organized into two stages. First, we gathered a preliminary list of consolidated recuperated enterprises based on interviews to key informants and available databases. Based on that list, then we selected 10 enterprises that met the consolidation conditions. To be sure, we were, not, we were analyzing enterprises that had overcome the foundation and constituting stage, we established the prerequisite that the enterprises had over four years of existence. The representation of the cases is not tied to a statistical criterion. We sought a thematic and conceptual representation. Thus, the selection was carried out considering a theoretical criterion of maximization of differences in reference to sector, region, size, and period of recuperation. Period of recuperation regarding the widespread crisis I talked about a few minutes ago. Moreover, we selected four recuperated enterprises that do not reach consolidation in terms of the proposed conditions to be deemed as control cases. We selected cases from different activity sectors, food, dairy, metallurgy, textile, gastronomy, lots of activity sectors and from all over the country, from Buenos Aires, south, the south, the north, the center of the country, from all over the country. Fieldwork was executed between September of 2017 and October of 2018. The cases were addressed by means of observations and semi-structured interviews. Additionally, we resorted to documents and articles published in communica communication graphic media. Data analysis was carried out through two channels. On the one hand, we elaborated on case reports with a narrative style that systematized the identified positive factors. On the other hand, we created a matrix to compare the cases. This allowed us to establish the general, the general sorry, recurrence of the factors, their combination patterns, and their links with the characteristics of the companies. The analysis of cases allow us to identify factors that foster their cooperative consolidation. These factors have different levels of recurrence between the set of cases, and they are uniquely combined in each experience. First, the recuperation is conditioned by the starting point, which we may call the inheritance. That is the type of a scale of resources that the cooperative received from their predecessors. By definition, in recuperated enterprise, the inheritance of productive assets is the primary resource of cooperative. We refer to productive assets in the broader sense, understanding them as the set of factors that may be utilized productively. This includes the production tool, facility, symbolic capital of the brand, working community, and the network with suppliers and clients. The inheritance of assets usually occurs without 
inherently the liability of the fail company. The absence of a significant stoppage of production is also revealed as an essential incentive favoring feasibility. The production units that are complete begin from a better condition with greater resources availability than those which have been developed altogether. In other words, productive continuity boost consolidation. In many cases, workers inherent uh, companies that had outstanding and well-known products in the market before turning into copies. This benefits their tax, giving it will not imply starting from scratch, but continuing and recovering the previous product. One further main factor is the involvement in organization and network with other actors. The involvement in federation and movement of empresas recuperadas and COPs facilitates political and economic resources to advance the process. This organization provides a significant amount of knowledge in terms of how to recuperate a company and self manage as well as the political and social relations that enable them to overcome such diverse obstacles like accessing a specific aid at the initial stage, negotiating the legal ownership of the production unit, receiving activist solidarity during possible repression, or even accessing markets and line of subsidy. Additionally, this organization represents the main source of knowledge and identification with ideas linked to the associative and self management movement. And they are also vital for strengthening their identity as workers, all of which impact on the cooperative project to be developed. Moreover, they are a key mediator in their relation with the government and policy. Even so, there are some experience of network articulation by cooperatives of the same sector with economic objectives. This does, this does not represent significant element for the cooperative. Indeed, cooperative organizations have more political rather than economic relevance. Marken Market exchange is a key element, another factor, of, of the empresa recuperada. The core objective of the productive activity is reproduction, the construction of the working community. But the goal is materialized through the production of goods and service for the market. In such sense, company has to develop products with attributes, as price, quality, that are competitive in the market. Having competitive products is essential. Most of the companies mainly trade their own brand. In many cases, those brands have already been marketed and installed by the previous company. In some other cases, the cooperative feature of the production becomes an added value, which is incorporated for the promotion of the product. Beside the most important of market, market exchange, COP's operation is complemented by the development of other chain principles, the most relevant of which is the retribution by the state. Next slide, then. Um, the support granted by the state at its different level is another important element. In comprehending political and economic support for the resolution of various obstacles, a time resulting from a dynamic of confrontation and negotiation between the state and the organized worker. Political support proves key to advance it toward the ownership of the production unit and restatement of production. On the other hand, all the sexist cases can receive state funding. This is the relation of distribution by the state are usually a case support 
to perform an a necessary investment or to deal with critical stage of the recuperation cycle. And in some cases, to fund the purchase of the real estate property. Nevertheless, the situation has not been an economic dependence bond with public policy. On the other hand, support by the local community also proved to be a key element in most of the ventures. Reciprocity by means of donation, voluntary work, mobilization by neighbors and organizations supporting workers and their venture contribute during the initial stage, stages. Does non-commercial interaction between cooperative and their social environment, which take place once the company is consolidated and perceived and introduced by workers as a way of giving back the support they received in the first stage. It is worth nothing that this another way of exchange by means of a reciprocity to not reach systematicity and are less relevant in the life of cooperative than those comprehend within redistribution relations and of course market exchange. A fundamental element is the legal, the legal ownership of the real estate property and the production tool. All the COPs have reached this condition by means of different mechanisms. In half of the case, full ownership was achieved via mechanisms such as purchase, the enforcement of appropriation law, um, or even in one of the, the cases, the construction of a new facility. In other half, different ways the ownership were achieved, such, such as by means of leasing or inconclusive expropriation proceedings. Overall, achieving legal ownership made the process more foreseeable and enabled that <coughs> workers focus on production. Achieving full ownership strengthened the process and promote the ability to access loans. Additionally, a key element is the political hegemony. As a cooperative is simultaneously an association of people and a collectively operated company. It faced the challenge of developing strategies that would enable the adoption of democratic operation rules with an adequate development of management structure that are operational and effective. The dynamics in the decision making process and the institutional ability to maintain and execute this, this decision is what is relevant. That is the existence of a project that leads the COP in the medium term and that also managed to build in a cumulative way. It is key that a cooperative project reach political hegemony within the core of a cooperative and manager to develop institutional and organizational mechanisms related to the execution of the project. <clears throat> the hegemony of the group is an element identified in this access cooperative. It is relevant to portray the importance of hegemony as an element that stabilizes stabilize the company and that all allows growth in a wide direction. The resulting type of such a productive unit is heavily influenced by the kind of company project directly leading group within its carry out. In the different cases, the same element across all the experience, experiences is that they are co projects in which economic management as a way of achieving reproduction of collective work group is of utter importance. Even so, they may incorporate into their association project innovation or articulation with other places and social context. They all revolve around an important axis of business political. We have two, uh, three variables more, uh, investment, working community, um, environment condition, but Maybe we don't have enough time. We can then we can pass to the conclusion. <clears throat> the hypothesis resulting from 
this study is said to be developed in future research. None of the recuperated enterprise are presented the same intervening of the abomationing aspect. Each case seems to represent a social craftwork that paves its own at the unique path toward certain duty. Through, it is true that certain factors impact more directly on the economic success rather than in the associative success and vice versa, positive effects tend to show in a convenient way and on the whole. Both aspects of the life of cooperatives can only be differentiated analytically. In real life, they are intervening and there is no such thing as an independent impact. Precisely, the peculiarity of the consolidated and assessed cases is the awareness of this duality. Likewise, it is still necessary to question the other side of some of the aspects identified in terms of their impact in COP terms. This may stress the development of the cooperative life. On the one hand, long lasting political hegemony may be very effective when profiling a strategic direction, but in the long term, it may lead to a more anemic democracy. On the other hand, production continues to cause necessary investment and in initial challenges, but it may impede innovation. Finally, the relevance of government action when asked about the additional difficulties that this social innovation process faced in the case of a retraction of the public policy addressing this sector. The cases hereby described prove that the recuperation of enterprise is a feasible way to build a more solidary economy. Learning about this option contributes to expanding the horizon of the e-development. Okay, thank you very much. Um, right, so let's open the floor for uh, questions or comments. I think Rory is really keen to, to make a comment or ask a question. Yes, um, uh, thank you for submitting that paper. Um, I confess I, I had some trouble uh, hearing uh, some parts of the conversation, so my question's related to that. Um, but thank you. Um, I, I was going to ask, is, is this paper published? Is it in the process of publication? Because uh, I'd love to see the finished paper if that's possible. Yeah. Um, uh, there's quite a few people who've been doing studies of recuperated um, re recuperated factories. This looks like one of the best design studies I've I've seen, and I'm I, I was keen um, in the early in the early English language um, stuff that we've had. There was this issue of the legal recognition, which you draw attention to the the legal ownership of the real estate, and as I understand it when the cooperative went to court, it might be granted legal ownership of the real estate, or it might only be granted the legal right to manage the assets rather than actually own the assets. So have I interpreted your, your paper correctly when you're saying that all of these 10 cases have made progress towards legal ownership of the real estate or, or I missed some of the things that you were saying about the, the legal issues towards the end. So just wondering if you were able to clarify um, how, how successful they've been in, in getting ownership of the real estate of the old company. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Rory. Yes, these cases have made advances. Julian, if we, 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 can, we can perhaps respond respond together um, they had made advances they are we think one of the factors that make them 
successful in our terms is that they were able to have some kind of recognition of the the ownership not always with a, as you say not always the ownership but sometimes the right to use or perhaps in some cases as for example one of the cases is a restaurant they could manage to have um how can, how this a rental um rent or hire the facility yes they could they could have that solved and it is not always easy to have a legal hiring or renting of the space of a restaurant in buenos aires for the empresas recuperadas so according to the sector the solutions have been different but all the cases were like safe in that aspect covered in that aspect mm. okay and thanks for linking it to new cooperativism. I, I imagine you you're aware of Marcelo's work in this area. I imagine, yes. I imagine he's aware of your work too. Yeah. We can share the, the paper or one version of the paper. Yes, in in the chat box we can put. That'd be good. Reference. And if, if you send it to the, the co-chairs, then we could put it up on the website if that's okay unless that's a problem for you in terms of publication in the future yeah thank you okay thank you uh roger has a question roger do you want to yeah okay thank you very much um thank you uh, denise and uh julian um it was a very interesting presentation i i agree with R rory that uh, it seemed like a a very good methodology and i noticed that you've you've actually done a lot of work and published a lot of work in in this area not probably mainly in spanish i guess um i wanted to ask a question about um, unions and managers because as you may be aware in the uk some of the early experiences had um, some issues with uh, trade unionists um taking over the management and um, actually running it in a, a kind of democratic way that was fitted well with trade union senses of democracy and not necessarily with cooperative um, senses of de democracy. Um, and um, secondly, in with regard to managers, you mentioned, I recognize that you know some of the some of the um, factors, the positive factors, um, are mutually reinforcing. But you mentioned um, the retention of qualified workers. Um, now, is is that skilled workers, or is that does that include managers? Um, because I, I'd be quite interested in. Uh, retaining the managers is like a two-edged sword sometimes because sometimes they want to manage in, in the old way and they are a barrier to a more democratic process. But on the other hand, they quite often have the uh, production skills and marketing skills that's required to make it uh, an economic uh, success. Um, and the third point is you have quite a lot of factors um, and you mentioned that they are some of them are mutually reinforcing. Is it possible to sort of cluster them uh, and look for the, the kind of synergies between some of them? Thank you. Sorry to ask so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they are great. Thank you very much, Roger. Roger. Julian, I think we can try to to, okay. to do it together. Beginning with unions, um, in general, they, they, they didn't take part in the processes. So the, the leaders of the movements of Empresas Recuperadas are not so related to that, to that sphere. Julian, do you, do you agree? Do you want to add? Something yes. more? Um, at first, this is true at first, in the first stage, no? 
when the process uh, began, uh, was a, a new movement, no? We have a very uh, important uh, strong tradition of uh, trade union, but trade union uh, didn't uh, leader uh, this process. But now uh, some trade union adopted the idea of the cooperative and, and sell movement. Uh, even so, uh, some of the leader some of the leaders uh, in, the, in the factories are, um, how will you say, um, trade union uh, leader or activists. Uh, activists no? at, the, at, at, the, at, the, at the plan, no? at, at the base, no, no uh, important leader in, in the factory. No? Um, or we have uh, two sources of and uh, leaders uh, in the cooperative. One from the, the, the trade union organization at the plant, another uh, very skilled uh, workers, maybe boss of production. No? Uh, but it's very strange, uh, for example, uh, a, manage, a manager, no? uh, a manager continue. And, it's true when the manage, uh, manage continue from the old the old uh, enterprise it, uh, has a lot of problem no, with the innovation the social innovation no is a kind of re replacement of the the old boss but it's not usual seeing the the, man no, the managers not, stay no. in these processes they tend to leave as soon as the old companies close or have problems? Yes, because the, the recuperation is a process of uh, evaluation. No? And it's very difficult for a, a, manager, a manager no, continue in this kind of process. No? Of course, we have, uh, all the factories have problems to retain uh, the more quality, uh, the more skilled work for, workforce, no? Um, they have uh, some adaptation, innovation to to incorporate knowledge. For example, alliance with university, with the uh, scientific or uh, institution. Um, yes, we, within these cases, where we identified lots of experiences of articulation between the companies and the universities or scientific institutions like uh, as a way of recruiting skilled workers this the one of these cases one of the the president of the cooperative was from the university and had arrived to the to the company through a, a university program the pasantías like stages stages of the students in the in the company that was a way of recruiting a skilled worker that also got to be president of the enterprise engineer no? engineer. engineer yes yes so and the th i think we we tackled the first two questions and the third one regarding synergies well um We've seen, for for example, that that having like um, like a political hegemony and a working community and a consolidated working community is important. For example, to um, to establish like um, like uh, an enterprise that can interact with the state in in a way the state is like a partner. There, there is like uh, one, one case that always talked with us about the partnership with the state, the strategic partnership with the state and not the dependence. And that perhaps has to do with the consolidated um, cooperative project that is a factor related with the political hegemony, for example. That's an example of a, of a synergy between factors that now comes to my mind. Mm. 
Right. Julian, do you do you want to sign? No, no. Okay. <laughs> So we have a couple of questions on uh, the chat. So, and then it's Ian. So we'll take them together because I think they're quite related to what you've been discussing. So Nicole is asking uh, to share some comments on the social organizing aspects and how did leadership emerge from the group of workers and whether it happened organically or whether particular foundations that uh, it built from. So it relates to what you have been uh, discussing, I guess. And Anna would like to know more about resistance among workers. So people who prefer to leave the company rather than turn into a worker recuperated uh, format. Well, the, at the beginning, the, the collectives tend to lose lots of lots of workers because, because the companies have been through very hardship and difficult years. So the collectives tend to be smaller every, as time goes by, and lots of the workers decide not to take part into the, the resistance and the cooperative. As we have just said, the first to leave the collective project are the managers and are those who can get another job easily and generally a small group of the original workers start the cooperative so yes it's not that all the workers decide to to take this collective action together that's that's the truth and i think the first question we have talked a bit about that yeah, yes yeah, yeah, yeah. An important point is that the cooperative uh, didn't um, born for, from a, a, an ideological project. No? Uh, it's about more, the cooperativism at the beginning is more adaptive. No? Uh, it's against the unemployment, no? more than uh, for the cooperativism values. No? This is important to understand the process. Um, yeah. I, I, sorry, sorry. Another important <laughs> thing is, uh, is uh, the need thesis that the, um, the recuperation democratize the conflict. No? And the conflict is uh, the, the cops are more uh, equal than the the former enterprise and all the conflict, conflict is more uh, equal, is between equal. And all the time we have uh, micro, uh, micro conflicts, no? Uh, but in other time, in, in a democratic uh, way of conflict, no? Compared with the capitalist uh, enterprise. Yeah, uh, Ian, would you like to raise your question? Yeah, th thanks for the paper. I thought it was inspiring. Um, I've seen the film The Take. Was that around 2004? Was very moved by that. But I, I'm, my question concerns debt. So my understanding is that the worker co-ops that were established by the UK government in the 70s loaded the uh, organizations with massive amounts of debt that the managers of the, the previous managers had loaded onto the company so that the the asset part of the assets if that's the assets were a huge amount of debt and that made the uh, operation of those recuperated uh, cooperatives uh, ch very challenging uh, now in the UK, most companies load themselves up with debt as a defensive uh, uh, posture to you know, often avoid uh, takeovers and stuff. And in fact, there's been a, like a reverse recuperation. I kind of thought, thought about the biggest consumer co-op in the UK uh, was a kind of reverse recuperation. So it's, it's now loaded with so much debt that the managers say they can't do anything in terms of being a cooperative because they have to service the debt that takes the priority. So I'm just wondering whether the situation in Argentina, which appears to me to have been 
very specific in terms of a retraction from the, the companies. The, the kind of money, the, the capital just just flow out of the companies to avoid the situation in the country, where whether that might have helped recuperation. Whereas we we're saddled with uh, we we love debt and financialization is the major business activity of the United Kingdom, uh, which provides uh, comfort for the capitalists. In fact, they are capitalists, aren't they? The people doing the financialization. So I'm just wondering whether any of that makes any sense. Well, what, here in worker recuperated enterprises, one of the one of the benefits or the, the assets is that they don't begin with the debt of the of the previous companies. The debt is is of the the previous company and perhaps the the co-ops have to negotiate with provide providers i don't remember the word with the people they they buy the materials they have to negotiate the debts but from like creditors but no no not creditors when the people you buy the the materials you need to produce buyers yeah yes Suppliers, suppliers. So they have to negotiate with suppliers the debt, but they don't carry with the debts of the boss. Mm. That's a benefit. And I was just thinking about an interview we we carried out with Julian last week to a leader of the movement, and he said that nowadays empresas recuperadas are in a are in a worse situation, worse than when they recuperated the enterprise because when they started. 20 years ago, they didn't, they didn't have any debt. They were poor, but they didn't have any debt. And nowadays, after a very regressive government that we had between 2015 and 2020, more or less, and the pandemic, they were in the, in the more or less the same situation because of the crisis, but it was worse because now they had debt. And when they began in 2001, they didn't. So that was the key difference. That was why lots of, or some of the enterprises during this last year had to shut down because now they have debt and at the beginning they didn't. Great, I hope this uh, answered your question. Uh, are there any other comments or questions? Any last points you want to make, Denise and Julian? I think that's a, yeah, a very great project and it would be great if you could share any format of uh, this um, paper with us uh, so we can share it with, uh, within the society and beyond. Uh, we have a few minutes. Do you want to take like a three or five minute comfort break? And uh, we can, yeah, all, vital to give uh, an applause for this uh, presentation thank you so much thank you very much okay thank you for the comments yeah a comfort break for five uh, uh, minutes uh, muchas gracias denise julian from the audience and uh, see you in a bit